the old me would have probably been like, like, oh, I don't want to do this, I'm scared. Or not scared, but nervous, very nervous. But as I got on, I just started thinking, you know what? I ain't scared of no one, fuck it. Mm -hmm. like, what, what changed? Like, so what? What's the worst that can happen in that ring? Nothing. Mm. But other people don't think about it, they're like, oh, you can like, get knocked out, yeah. But you could also knock them out, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm a people's champion, that's the way you gotta be. Mm. I re like, represent England, I represent here, mm. Dubai. What does that mean to you, to be the people's champion? Again, I'm gonna keep repeating like this. Prince, Big Prince, statement. Prince, Big statement. Yeah. Prince represented England. Yeah. Look, look who he thought that. No one back then was really good from England, except from Ryan Road. And and, and went and, to um, America and did the business as well. Yeah. On Kevin Kelly. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So what does that mean to you being the people's champion? It means a lot. Look at like Tyson Fury, another version. Like he's the people's champion. Like all these little quotes like "You big Dossa." Like everyone yeah. says that in England now. So like. That's what I'm going to do. You're a bum. <laughs> yeah, you big bum. Yeah. Guys, welcome to another episode of Jibble with Jabba. Today, I'm joined by what I've been told, the future of boxing. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lightning Junior, Tony Curtis, and his coach, Nate Jones. Yes, sir. Needs no introduction. Yes, sir. So you guys just came back from a weigh-in, right? Yeah, just uh, <coughs> about two hours ago. How was it? It was marvellous. Yeah? It was fucking fantastic. Really good, yeah? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I personally, I thought we were a team. Then you three rocked up wearing matching tracksuits, and I just felt like I wasn't part of the team anymore. So I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> we were a team, but you would have took, <laughs> took the camera to the way in <laughs> You know what? If you told me, I would have brought the camera to the way in I would have brought it. Next one. When's your fight? Your fight's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. So before we get into the introductions, do you want to do a quick, uh, quick prediction on tomorrow's fight? I mean, this isn't coming out till Monday, well, so nobody's gonna know. Well, it's an exhibition, four minute, no, four rounds, two minute rounds. Um, yeah, I'm basically just gonna go walk through him very easily, smash him up, and then on to the next one on twenty six. He's got the confidence there. Yeah? Oh yeah, I'm very confident. Wait, the next one's in the twenty fifth, twenty six. Yes, of this month, and we have one in March. So we ready, man. We got a lot of stuff lined up for this young kid. He's a future boxer. Sky's the limit for him. We keep him on the right track. He's going to be amazing. Is that a lot of fights in a short amount of time for for young boxing, or is that normal? Because oh, I know in older boxing, they take m m like much less fights. You're not going to do three three fights a month or three fights in two months if you're a professional boxer, right? Of course. Yeah. Bo professional boxers have more wear and tear. Mm -hmm. Amateur boxers, three quick rounds, three two-minute rounds. So professional fighters have more three-minute rounds, ten-round, six-round fights, a lot of wear and tear. Mm -hmm. So amateur fighters don't get that much wear and tear, so it's much easier. Yeah, because I remember back in the day, like when I'm watching a lot of documentaries about Tyson and Roy Jones and all that, their coaches were trying to let them fight every two weeks, every month, because they didn't, want them, they didn't want them to get into any trouble. They didn't want them to get kind of like, you know, dazzled by all the yeah. stuff. So they were like, we're just gonna keep them training, keep them training, keep them training. And then they won't realize, yeah. you know, there's an outside world. It's an outside world. And plus, now nowadays kids are bigger and stronger. Mm. So not as many amateur fights. I'm like, we're, gonna, we're not gonna put them in a lot of amateur fights. We'll give them enough, maybe 20 more before we turn them pro, 30 more. 40 more before we turn him pro. Yeah. And then by the time 18, 19, he'll be ready for pro. When, when we approve, when I approve it, I think he'll be ready and then we're gonna sign him and turn pro. But right now we don't, we don't need a lot of fights. He got a lot of skills, a lot of ability. This guy's living for the kid. I'm gonna keep him well grounded. And it's up to him to be as great as he wanna be. And I do believe he, he can be probably the best ever. You know what I mean? The kid is amazing. You realize that's a big statement. Yeah, like, that's a big statement. That, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure yeah. for an adult. Yeah. For when people who have been in the game for a long time are telling you, mm. you got the potential to be the best ever. Mm -hmm. The best ever is a lot of people, dude, yeah. that have come before you. I oh, know. Like so, let's talk about the beginning. So you originally started boxing when your dad took you to a youth club, right? Yeah. Um, and then what happened there? Well, first, I was seven years of age and I didn't really like it. So I didn't, 
basically I just stopped for like three years. Then I started again like ten and a half. And then yeah, I just started going. It's had like within the first two years I had two fights. Then I went to America for like a couple of months. Went to the Mayweather Gym Spars. Uh trained with Freddie Roach for like for six months. Do so, you yeah. realise the statements you're making? The train like you know how many adults can't say I trained with Freddie Roach yeah, or, for any months, let alone like Freddie Roach is, is a legend in oh, the game. Oh. He's a magic maker. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and Freddie Roach saw something in you. He didn't even want money as well, I heard. Mm. So that's, that's, there's a lot of things that you're doing that people your age don't get to do. Even in these fights, you're doing ring walks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of youngsters are not doing that. They're not getting that attention where they got time to walk in the ring and people are watching them and they're... That's because they don't speak up. Hmm. Tell me more about that. They've got to speak up and... Kids are quite... Most kids are quite quiet and they don't speak up. They've got to be heard. So you were like, I need a ring walk. Yeah, I need a ring walk. How are you going to get all the fans and like entertain people if you don't do a ring walk or have fun with it? Like People just go in and take it all serious. Like, mm. Yeah. Go have fun with it. So what about the ring walk is it that makes you excited about doing it? Because everyone else starts dancing along with you. That's the funny part. Yeah. <laughs> Put a funny song on and just start dancing. Which funny song? Do you know it's quite funny you say that because I have a friend of mine who's uh, he's fighting in uh, Texas on Sunday. He's UFC. If he wins this one, he goes for the heavyweight title fight. Mm -hmm. His name's Bam Bam Tuivasa. He's, he's crazy. He's an Australian. After he wins the fight, he grabs a fan shoe, pours a beer in it and drinks it. And like He's got a wicked <laughs> fan club. He comes in with Spice Girl songs and like songs like All Saints and really cheesy songs. And I was saying to him, bro, why do you, like all these UFC, you know, UFC fighters, they come in with hard music and all that stuff. And he was like, A, I like them. And B, you're going to remember somebody that beat you who walked into, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. who, who came into a Spice Girl song. You're going to remember that fight. Everybody got their own. Their own signature where they where they walk out. Their own character. What, wherever they get them going, if it works for them, so be it. Everybody come in with different types of songs, um, so that's okay. Whatever moves your beat, yeah. you get get that motor started. That's the most important thing. And how different is is boxing? I mean, it's a very wide statement. How different is boxing from when you were fighting? Obviously, you went to the Olympics. Um, only man from Chicago to win a medal in the Olympics. Yes. Um, still have the middle? Yeah, no, I bury my twin sister when she died in lupus in nineteen ninety seven. Wow. She was my number one fan, my twin. And I just felt it was supposed to be on her neck and I buried her with it. Wow, that's touching, man. Yeah. That's beautiful. It was hers. Wow. She helped me win it. So No, I understand that because I've got twins as well. Mm -hmm. And I understand the bond between twins is is phenomenal. It's something mm -hmm. else. Yes, my number one fan, my, my rock, my soldier, my best friend. My, yeah. my, she bullied me, but she took whatever she wanted from me, but yeah. that was okay. I loved her. And how did you get into boxing? Because your, your story is quite incredible too, right? I got into boxing because I was a bad kid growing up in Chicago. Cabrini Green, one of the worst projects ever. And um, I always would fight, get in the fight. So I said, uh, they started a boxing gym at the park district across the street from my building, Seward Park. And they said, take him over there and put him in the boxing gym since he want to fight people. And I went there the first day and the, 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 the head coach named Tom O'Shea, who taught me boxing, an Irish guy that moved to Chicago, moved to Chicago from Ireland in the 50s, saw me and thought he saw the greatest thing he ever seen. But I was 0-8. Wow. I was 0-8, I was gonna quit. And I'm like, Coach, I'm on eight. I'm ready to quit. It's not for me. He said, son, it's, you're going to be okay. You're natural. And then eventually I called on, I picked up, and I won two years in a row. We win the tournaments. I won every tournament in the nation. I became one of the top fighters in the nation. I just kept it going. And um, boxing has been my life. And that's why I'm mentoring this kid, because I know what he's going through. We look out the same window. Yeah. And I, I can just look at him and tell what's bothering him. I sometimes I come to and talk to him when he don't when he not expecting it because I can just feel his pain and feel his, his what's 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 bothering him. So I pull to the side and we talk. Our relationship is getting closer and closer. It's gonna be a bond that that no one is gonna ever break because I love the kid. He trusts me. I trust him. 
I believe in him. And I think it's hard for me to say that word, but this kid can be, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Even me training, even with the, with the training with me, training with um, the great trainers he had in the past, all that sprinkle added on, and I see things that I've never seen before. Man, he do some of the Mayweather moves, some of the Prince's moves. I teach him stuff, some of the old stuff from the other training that he had. It's great things, man. I'm like, this kid is amazing. And I'm slowing him down, spicing him up the correct way, and talking to him like a young man, telling him things not to do, the way to sometimes talk to people, sometimes listen. And, um, you know, doing that, listening to me, listening to me. And I respect him a lot for that, taking the time out to hear what I got to say. And um, the sky's the limit for him. Wow. So, okay. So what about boxing when you went back at 10 years old made you think, okay, this is for me. This is what I want to do. Um, I actually don't know. You don't know? You were just, your dad was like, you're going, you're like, all right, well, no, let's do it. Let's do it. When my dad was little, he wanted to do it, but that he wanted out to. There's a lot of things he wanted to do when he was young. He told me that he wanted to be like in the army and stuff. So I just took his passion and then after a while, so at the start of it, I was like, I'm just going, like, because I had mates there and stuff. And then as I got on, it started getting better, and I started liking it. Mm. And then that's it, I just took a liking to it. When did you, was there a specific moment where you had that kind of, like, eureka moment where you were like, oh, actually, I'm good at this. Like, I'm better than the people around me, or that stood out to yourself. When was that confidence boost that you had that you can remember? Um, it's when everyone used to, I remember going to a gym, and then they told me that, I need to start taking it seriously. And then I had to go to another gym because I was betting all the people there. So yeah, I guess it was then. So you were like, all right, time to move on. These people can't can't keep up with me. Yeah. All right, another thing is, again, crazy to me. So you were mentioning not a lot of people, and I, this is the thing, when I'm talking about the things that that you have achieved or have happening in your life right now, Not a lot of people have people like Nas, the Prince Nassim Hamed, who are supporting them, who are coming to their fights, who are having very personal moments with you and telling you that, dude, you're ready. Like you're 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 on the track to be something special. Now, to me, Prince Nas has been an idol of mine since I was younger, and I don't even box, but he's he, a legend, man. He's a legend. He's I, the best. I mean, I've got a bone to pick with him because it's because of him, him I had you. that fringe. When I was younger, I was walking around with the worst fringe ever. But you remember when you used to have that fringe yeah, that yeah, went I over like that? that. Well. I yeah, that. I used to walk around with that. And I remember I was just like, yeah, that's because of Naz. There was nothing in me that wanted that fringe until I met him. <laughs> and yeah. then that was just like, okay, it's, time, it's fringe time. It's time to go. Naz is something else as well. Of course. Oh. Like, really? how, how did you, let, let's talk about this. Did you know Naz before you met him? Is it something that you, like, you used to watch? Yeah, you did. Yeah. You, that That's point, like. I remember one day we were just watching TV and Dad goes, actually, give me the control. I want to, I want to show you something. So anyway, he takes the control, searches up something on YouTube. I was like, who the fuck is he typing up? And then he type, and then he put in this, all right, his name, obviously. We put, yeah. He clicked on it. He started playing. And I saw this guy just start doing some flips. I was like, is he, is he in the circus or something? Yeah. I started laughing my head off. And it was just so funny. I was just like, this guy is a fucking legend. Yeah. Then you saw the bell ring and then everything changed, Sorry, right? Sorry for swearing, but no, 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 no. Keep, keep it going. Like, Naz was doing things that in no the ring that no one, no one else, that was that done no, that. No one no one else was doing that. at all. No one. Like, I've never seen anyone. Maybe, maybe glimpses of it, but he yeah. done it. He done yeah. it. He done exactly. It consistently. I've never seen anyone he was seem showman. like they're having that much fun in a fight before in my life. And taking the piss and getting away with it. Yeah. And you know what? Saying that, because I watched a couple of videos and you. I can see a lot of his of his flair in, in the way yes. you move, dude. And especially in things like the one thing that Naz could do was change direction on a penny before mm -hmm. you even knew what was. I mean, boxers can do that now, but not like he was. No, hands course. down. Yeah, no. I mean, sometimes hands behind the back, hands, you don't know where his hands are. But he was the full package at a time where no, that, one, else no one else was doing it. I mean, you had other fighters like uh augustus and stuff like that, that oh that, yeah, that, oh, yeah. That, still, yeah the drunken drunken master he was yeah. they he had game 100 percent. but not as much as yeah. this 
but Nas is something. He was literally. He fought Flood, right? Yeah. 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 He was literally something out of this world, and continues to be till now. I mean, you, there's no way. I, I I watch a lot of boxing. Never have I skipped a Nas highlight reel. Of course. Not neither have I. Ever. The main thing about this kid is I'm training his feet to go with it now. And when your feet are right, you couldn't box if you didn't have feet. Mm. So if your feet are right, everything else is right. If your feet are wrong, you're, everything else is wrong. Your jab not right, your punch not right, your roll not right. When you, I'm a program, I'm program programming his feet. This kid's feet game is going to be magnificent. I, it's scary. The potential is getting scary. And I just sit some days and be in the gym like, dude, you don't even know what you're doing, man. He blows my mind with some of the moves he do. And it's, it's scary, man. The sky's the limit for him. I just got to keep him well-grounded. Don't get don't let him get too big-headed. Mm -hmm. And the sky is the future. The sky's the limit for this kid. He has a beautiful future in boxing. And I'm going to be there to see it through because um, I like the potential. Mm -hmm. I like where we're going and where we're where we headed. So you worked with Mayweather for 15 of years course. which you know how much weight that adds to the statement he just said about you yeah that adds a lot of weight because it's not a guy in a boxing gym who's a who's a guy who does pads saying that yeah it's a guy that's worked with some of the best boxers in the world so that adds so much weight to it and I can only imagine see I don't know if because you're so young you don't realize the weight that is being I carried hear that a lot, man. I hear that with a lot people. My dad. Yeah, I don't think you understand. Like a lot me. of a lot of the things that you've achieved and a lot of just places you've trained in Ingle Gym, you know, the pedigree that has come Freddie before Rose, you, Freddie Roach, Nate Jones, Nate Jones the, the, like the pedigree Chris of the I've people seen. they've seen. So it's not like it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it's it's one thing you training with them. That's fine. But it's another thing you training with them and them saying that about you. Yeah. That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that? And do you understand it? Yeah, of course I understand it. Of course I understand it. It's a big thing that everyone's saying that. It's a lot of pressure as well at the same time. But I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what pressure is. Everyone goes on about pressure. What's pressure? I don't yeah, know what it is. See, this is the thing that I'm saying. I don't know what it is. Because he's so vibrant and young and, and ready to go, the old is me, he noticing it? The old me would have the old me would have probably like like, oh I don't want to do this, I'm scared. Or not scared, but nervous, very nervous. But as I got on I just started thinking, you know what? I ain't scared of no one. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. like, what what changed? Like, so what? What's the worst that can happen in that ring? Nothing. Mm. But other people don't think about it, they're like, oh you can that like get knocked out, yeah, but you could also knock them out. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm a people's champion. That's the way you gotta be. Mm. I re like represent England. I represent here. Mm. Boy, what does that mean to you to be the people's champion? Again, I'm gonna keep repeating like this. Prince, big statement. Prince, big statement. Prince, yeah. Prince represented England. Yeah. Look, look who he fought. Like no one back then was really good from England, except from Ryan Road. And and, and went and, to um, America and did the business as well. Yeah. On Kevin Kelly. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So what does that mean to you being the people's champion? It means a lot. Look at like Tyson Fury, another version. Like he's the people's champion. Like all the little quotes like you big Dossa. Like everyone yeah. says that in England now. So like that's what I'm gonna do. You're a bum. <laughs> yeah, you big bum. Yeah. Oh. And And their character. Like that's what that's what it is. Everyone loves that character about them. Everyone's got a different character. Do you feel like that character is genuine or do you think that no, a lot natural. of people put the... Yeah, so you think it's natural. Yeah. So what about your character is making you... stand? Like, what about your character adds to the boxing that you bring to the table? A character has a lot because your character is your confidence and your confidence is that if you don't have no confidence, you're going to basically lose because you're not going to throw. You're going to just stand there, like, moving move around the ring. Like, look at Nez. The confidence he had to dance in front of someone, leave his chin out in the open... That's what I'm trying to say. Do you think that that worries boxers and opponents? Yeah, it throws them off. When yeah, because they're like, hold on a minute. How's he got, this guy's not taking it that? seriously, so there must be something there that he knows that I. He must have the next chess move ready it, to go. It's a setup. You use that as a setup. He's so trying you, to frustrate him. That's what mm. it is to frustrate him. Yes. And a bit also of entertain. Sleight of hand as well. That's happening on the side. That 
it's so much that this kid has picked up and learned at a young age. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, you never know how far this kid can go. And it's hard for me to, to, to men to see, to say he can be the best ever. But I've been around Mayweather and Sam Prince. It's hard to come out of my mouth, but it's really true. Do you, like, like I tell this kid, do you know what you, what's in front of you, man? Do you know what you really can be? Keep doing what what I tell you. Keep listening to your father, and I, I'm here to to, to 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 tame that confidence. Hmm. Don't let it get out of range. Let him. Don't let him overdo himself or get aboard himself and try to piss on people. At the same time, be confident because confidence is the greatest seller. Mm-hmm. But you have to be professional and smooth and likable and approachable, and that's going to get you far away than being. A, Asshole, sometimes. Yeah. So you gotta be, you gotta know how to, you know, change it up and be respectful because you need the people, mm-hmm. you need to be liked, and that's my role with him. I gotta show him the correct way to do it because you know he the skill level is growing every day. Is what we have to do outside the gym that I'm working with him on, and he's gonna be okay. Yeah, because there's a thin line between. Confidence and arrogance. Yes. Confidence will make people want to see you win. Arrogance, they'll still watch you, but they want you to lose. Yeah. So, but you know. Gonna, what's made with his own motto? Though? Yes. <laughs> Hate me or love me, you're still going to watch me. Yeah. It's true. But I'll say, but do you want, I want people, people to, to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, obviously I want people to love me, but I don't, they want to hate me. I don't care. You can hate me. I don't really care. How do you deal with that? Because obviously we live in a world where haters are going to hate and yeah, potatoes are going to potate. So on Instagram and, yeah, and so social thousands media. I just laugh. Does it bother you at all? No, I laugh. Mm. My, my mom's the worst for it. She just looks at all the messages and she goes, tell, she tells me and my dad, I'm like, why do you even bother? Mm. Like, who cares? They're not one to us. Yeah, n- never replied to any messages. I made I that don't. I made that mistake um, before oh. when I replied to someone. And I replied because I generally was like, look, yeah. you're wrong about what you're saying. If you want to have a dialogue about it, it we can have look, a dialogue. It made you look like a fool. Not just that. It's like it even when I corrected and made them understand where mm-hmm. they went wrong, yeah. they wouldn't accept that no. and they'd find something else because that's all they want to do. They just want to attack. They're, they're depressed. They're hurt. They need something. You're an outlet for them, you know? need something to dwell on. Exactly. Now, what I saw another video of you training in an olympic size ring in your garden oh yeah that's dedication Every, most, to another level most, not a lot of people most houses we moved to we have my dad ends up getting a ring in there within two months that's what i'm saying again i really hope that you see what's going on what's and i, I really on? i really hope that you realize that yeah. mate i guarantee you out of every thousand kids your age that are trying to be boxers, one of them has a ring in his garden. Hmm. And that's you. Mm, I understand. And when you say every house I go to, <laughs> you know when dads will go to war for their children and they'll yes. and they'll make they will they'll make the world turn upside down yes. and the and the stars you land know, on, on you know? Is there. You know my dad does everything for me. He's, I couldn't ask for any oh, better dad really. And I see it as well. When I was speaking to your dad, when I first met him, when he was talking about you, there was a light in his eyes that was, mm-hmm. that was different. Like you can see the love and the, like in, your dad knows your champion already. He, he's already yeah. seen, he's seen the future. He, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> he's already proud of you, dude, from, do you know what I mean? Like, cause, no, because it's, it's different. It's not, it's something different. Like again, you have a family of how many how many fighters? Me, Stanley, my little brother Henry, Presley, and my little sister Monroe. And they're all <laughs> ready to rock. All ready. No, to no, rock. no, not Monroe. Yes, yeah, she, she will be home. soon. <laughs> Monroe ready. She's ready. She's, yeah, yeah. She's just as fast as him. She's something else. She's beautiful. I love her. She's a beautiful young lady. Beautiful. Um, she she runs the house. Yeah, yeah she's in charge. Is she the only girl? Yes. yes. Oh, you are in trouble, man. I know. Yes. The queen of the castle. Baby. I know. And, and she'll never have a boyfriend. Yeah. Her brother's not going to let her. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, to, to be honest, <laughs> it's not 
the best family to come and try and go on no. that first date with to be no. honest. <laughs> it's just like maybe let me just go through the back way and again, he goes into the back and there's an olympic sized ring in the side he's like nah this is yeah. not the household yeah. that i want the to be dating brother. yeah you got a good thing yeah um you know i just love the family and the connection how they all you know they, you know they fuss a lot but that's brothers and sisters yeah they, of course everybody argue yeah. brothers and sisters fight but the love that they show each other, when 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 they're not paying attention, the small things they do to each other is so beautiful, mm-hmm. and that I pay, I pay attention to and then how close they are, and I you just know they got each other back one hundred percent. And I like that a lot about them, and that's a real family bond. The dad, you know, the mom, they you know they get on they get on their butt sometimes, but it's needed. And mm. I, I, like when I, I talk to them on the side, I tell them, but you got to listen, you got to understand, you know, and and I be sometimes the mediator, but I love it. I have no problem with it. Mm. It's, you know, they invite me in their household. I love them. I respect them. And I'm going to do what I have, I have to do to make sure everything around me is successful because I like, you know, when his dad met me, he said, man, I want you to train my son. You're the man for my son. And I said, which one's your son? And I seen him start moving around. I'm like, man. Then I worked the pass with him. I said, this kid got it. And every day, my first time coming to the bar, I was training him. I'm saying to myself, this kid is a freak. And then I just, he just started biting me. They flew me back the next time. And it's been good ever since. And I'm going to be here. And I'm I'm, I'm an older man. I'm 49 years old. But I'm going to be here too when he's real champion. I got 20 more years with him, so Mm. we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, that's beautiful, man. And you only got to look at some of the connections like Tyson and Cuss and and these people where you realize the importance of of a coach and and a mentor. And at the same time, one thing that you might not realize, especially the pressure on your dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a father of an athlete has to make some sacrifices that goes unseen and especially with the way he deals with you and with the pressure he puts on you it's hot it's a deeper part of his soul and the way he loves you yeah that he can sacrifice that because you know how how dads are i just want to be good i don't want to be the bad guy i don't want to be the one shouting i don't want to be the one telling you off do you know what i mean He's had to sacrifice that now. He he's had to accept. I'm gonna have to be the bastard sometimes, and I'm gonna have to talk to you in a way that you're not gonna like me for that week, or I'm gonna have to. Yeah. That's a sacrifice that is hard. Yeah. As a father myself, that's a hard sacrifice to make. Yeah, yeah it is. You know, I, even with my twins now, like I I never shout at them. I never do anything. But I know they're only four years old. I know the second that they get into a sport, if I want. To help yes, them get to yes. where they want to get, they might yeah. not understand it at you such a young age. I need to sacrifice that yes. part of me that is the good guy, the Mr. Nice yes. guy, the whatever, and that's gonna break my heart part of it. But it has to be done. You know, you look at all the best athletes, they'll tell you. Yeah, there was some wavy times with my dad. There was some rough yeah, there is. rough parts. I remember sometimes you know? me and him have had light full on fights. Mm. It's gonna happen. It's me gonna and happen. Him like the same, we just clash. Yeah. But if he talks to me in a funny way, I'll talk. I know I shouldn't do it, but I should. I talk back the hmm. same, same way. I don't mean to, but it's just how we are. Look, as long as you know, and there's another thing why it's important to have someone like your dad and have someone like Nate, because people don't realize how thin that line is again to slip hmm. when things are good. When you train your own kid, is when I was training my two boys hmm. boxing, I realized that. I don't talk to him the same I talk to another guy that's not my that's not my child. Mm. It's more forceful. What I say, hit the back five rounds. If I come to another kid, I say, son, I say five rounds. It's a different temperament. Too much investment. So I had to let another guy train my son. His name was Donnell Nixon, a former heavyweight Olympian in the 1992 Olympics. I allow him to train my son because I seen the pressure. It's just a different love we got for him, and, but it, it's forceful love. And sometimes we don't know how to change that and show it and, and, and switch it up sometimes. It's more forceful, it's like you tell them to empty the garbage. 
Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But what happened is, watch this. Now, I don't know if you've experienced this, but when I was little, if my mom told me to wash the dishes, I'd be like, oh, come, I'd have a million things to say to get yeah. out of it. Yeah. But when I go to my friend's house and his mom cooks, I'm the first one to be like, oh, thank that was lovely. Yeah. Let me wash the dishes for you. Yeah. So when you're at someone, you know, when yeah, it's yeah. always easier when someone else isn't that close connection yeah. telling you to do things. Because it's, it's, that father pressure, you force on your kid all the time. Yeah. And sometime at the wrong time in the gym, it's like, I said, sweep the floor. I said, hit the bag five rounds. You know what I'm saying? And when, when another kid do, you talk to him like a young man. Hey, champ, I said, six rounds, do six rounds. But your son, hey, boy, I said, nothing tell you, do mm-hmm. six rounds. Hit the bag six rounds. You don't listen to nothing I tell you. And that's to be too much. And that's yeah. sometimes when his dad comes off of him like that, I'll put him to the side. I know it hurts his feelings. But sometimes I say, man, look, don't let it bother you. Mm-hmm. I understand. I'm the same way with my son. Take, let's go, champ. I hit him over here and I hug him. Mm. It's, all, it's okay with him. You give him three more rounds. We good. Mm. And he did. The dad is over now, okay? Mm. And you know, I'm, I mean, eight sometime because I look out the same window, like I said, he does. I'm a fighter, too, a, a old fighter, a retired fighter. But I'm looking out the same window, so I understand it. Mm. And, um, you know, that's that's the best part. That I, that's the best one of the best reasons I'm here to mediate and to help him out, to mentor him. I, I know when his fears come, I can look in his eyes. I know when he when he doubtful. I know when he's he's too much pressure on him. Because I looked at the same woman before and mm. I come talk to him and we figure it out together. That's so, the that's the thing because they know like your dad knows you this is the one thing you forget and you realize it when you have your own kids. You can't kid your parents, man. Especially with your emotions. And they've been with you looking into that face. Since you for 15 years, your dad knows your every expression, and I, it was funny. Wow. Someone said that to me when I was uh with a friend. So, my friend was uh smoking up, and he we went to his house, and uh, his mom was like, Why are you smoking that shit? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Nah, I'm not. And she was like, You realize I've been looking into your eyes for 18 years, mm-hmm. I know every vein, every glimmer, every I know you <laughs> more than you know yourself. You are Believe me. it or not, yeah, because you are me, dude. I, like mm-hmm. I've seen you go through everything that you've been through, and I don't think we we realize how how deep the connection is with our parents. You know, it's only when you have kids where you go, man, I can't believe I told my mom to shut up. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like if he told me to shut up, I'd be like, who are you talking to, you, man? <laughs> like, are you mad? I couldn't say that to my mom. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because my mom would yeah. knock me out. Dude, I'm the same. My mom was Arab, dude. There was no messing around oh, in that house, bro. <laughs> yeah. My mama ran the house. Yeah. She controlled the house. Now, but she house? said, go. Mm. I, and my father was, you know, he wasn't in my life like that. I knew yeah. he was. and um, But he was a good guy. But he came around every now and then. I may see him on his birthday. I may see him on Christmas. I may not. But I saw mama every Christmas, every day. Every bad report card, I sat in front of her face and listened to what she had to say. Mm. Every single time I went through things, that was mama. You know, I lost my mom on Mother's Day, 2010. Wow. And, um, yeah, so I miss my mom. My mom was my rock. Yeah. And like, you know, sometimes it be your mom, sometimes it be your dad, but my dad didn't play the role. My mom played his dad. He got his dad and his mom. So they both play a very important role in his life. And, you can see that it's going to keep him well grounded. And I'm just going to be the, the the mediator here and there to help him out and show him how to be a great champion and show him how to walk through those doors the correct way and become one of the best fighters ever, if not the best. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, that's you know, saying Because I thought when I saw Mayweather, I saw the best fighter ever. But it's hard. I look at this kid, I'll be like, I, sometimes I can't even say what I'm saying. Like, do you know? I, and it won't come out. I'm like, boy, you, know, you can be the best yeah, yeah. I won't, but boy, you can be the man, the best. And he'd be like, yeah. say it. I'd be like, no, it, we won't, it can't come out. But, dude, you, man, it's crazy. The sky's the limits, man. He do yeah. things I've never seen before. And he getting that sauce from Freddie Roach and sauce from me and, and, and the sauce from um, Dominic. Yeah, yeah. Prince and I seen all that stuff and then adding it to it and controlling his feet. When I when I fix his feet, when I'm fixing his feet, it makes everything flow like butter. Yeah. Like it's amazing. It, it, I can't wait for the next ten to fifteen years because Me too, man. Me too. Don't worry. Workers. You got another snitch here with me, mate. I'm gonna be watching yeah. him. I'm just gonna oh. be like, Hey, listen, 
you know where Tony is right now? <laughs> he's not in the gym. He's on the beach. Get him back in there. Let's go. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. else, so. He's ready to go. Who are your favorite boxers of all time? Prince. Prince? Yep. Anyone else that Roy. you've modeled? Roy Jones. Roy was a beast. Oh, yeah. Roy, Roy. Was, I love Roy. Roy was, a, Roy was a bad guy. He was very fast. What I didn't like, what, what, Roy beat a lot of people with his raw quickness. Mm. He didn't jab a lot, but his quickness was amazing. Quickness mixed with some serious uh, power yes. as well. He, he, quickest guy ever born to me. Quick feet, quick double jabs, triple jabs, and triple hooks yeah. was like the cr- fastest guy. Instead of using his jab, his, his, his jab was the hook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He hooked, yeah, yeah that's yeah. perfect. He put it in better words. His hook was his jab. He didn't jab a lot, and that would have made him, I think, a much, much better fighter. Mm. But the way he do his style was dominant, and his speed was so advanced over everybody else. It was that's, that's what made him so great. So who are your who would you say are your favorite boxers of, of all time? Of, of course, Mayweather. I watched him grow up. I've seen him say how great he was going to be, and I used to be like, man, shut up, you talk too much. But start seeing it materialize, like, dude, this dude is great, and saying his dreams. When we was getting ready for the Olympics, he was talking about beating Oscar De La Hoya. I'm like, dude, we got to go fight an Olympics fight with Russia and Cuba. Why are you worried about Oscar right now? I'm going to beat him later. I promise I'm going to beat him. I'm like, man, shut up. We in the shower. I'm like, man, shut up. We ain't worried about Oscar. We worried about the Cubans right now. But this is, you know, one time we fought against Mexico, and Floyd lost a close decision. And he was internally, he got sick internally. Wow. Threw up, didn't want to go outside. I disgraced my country. I'm like, this dude is crazy. He felt like he disgraced his country because he lost to Mexico. And that his will to win is so strong. Mm. Every run Olympics, this guy came in first place. Everything he did, he wanted to be better than everybody. Sometimes it could be sickening, it could get in your nerve, but that's what, that's, that's what rocks his boat. Like Michael Jordan, he wanted to mm. be better than everybody. Great people is are insane sometimes, and He's one of them. And yeah, yeah. I see a little bit of him, so I'm going to guide it because I don't want him to get too crazy. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying, like Floyd and, you know, Michael Jordan, but just tame it. Mm. Just tame it and calm it down. And let him, let, it's going to be time. You're going to have to let it out. Mm. Let it out when we're training. Let it out when we're hitting the back. Let it out when we're running. Go run them 10 miles real fast. You know what I'm saying? Go run them five miles real fast. Be mad at the road that way. Let it out. That's the time we're gonna let out, and you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I just, I'm so proud to be, to be given this opportunity, to, to, to help mentor this kid and train this kid, and be a father figure as well, and it's a job I wanted, and the job I, I'm gonna take a lot of, pre, a lot of, pride, um, pride, uh, pride, yeah, a lot of pride in it. Thank you, a lot yeah. of pride, and I, I appreciate it, mm-hmm. and you know, the sky's the limit. It's crazy. So you, you, I heard you say that you want to go pro when you're 16. Yeah. And that just explain that to me. That just shows you, his readiness and his eagerness to go. I'm what? Bo- do I'm bo- you- God, I, I know what you're gonna say. What? He's gonna say why? I'm bored in there, which is the rubbish. You have to wear headgear. I just want to. You're, fight, you're fighting without headgear now already, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. I want to get in there and just knock some spark out. So and do, it with style. do you think because there's a lot of things and because you're quite small for your age, right? Yeah. And I, 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 yeah. I can. This is what my dad said. If obviously he said I need to mature my body first, that. Yeah. So I might have to wait until I'm 17, 18. Yeah. 17, 18 until you fully. Because I, I know that I was very small. I was like up to here until I was like 18, and then the other thing. But what that did, because I used to play a lot of football, football, not soccer. <laughs> Let's tell him. Yeah, I've already, I've already explained it. And too. where I was small, it was an advantage for me because ain't nobody catching me. No, that's I could so change fast. direction before they even knew what was going on. I was on the other side of the pitch, ready to go. Yeah. So that works for you in your favor because I've seen you dance, and I will say dance because he dances. Um, he's very fluid. You can see. You can see his his mind is working very fast when when he's boxing. Um, is that something you notice while you're boxing? Do you feel like... No, I feel like I'm all so emotional when I'm boxing. It's like, really? Yeah, I know when they're going to throw, and I know as soon as I th- they throw, I've just got, my feet have got ready to be 
in and out like that. But that shows how you feel like a slow motion, but it shows how fast your mind is really working that you're you're in that limitless stage yeah. where you can see things happening. See, little Tony, when I started helping him out, I started seeing him being a dancer and him boxing into the dancing. I said, we got to have, we got to have For dancing evil. into the boxing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We gotta, you're a boxer first, then a dancer. You're not a dancer adding boxing, a boxer adding dancing. So let's do it the correct way. Let's be smart. Let's make sure our fundamental right. Let's make sure we're behind our chest. I tell my fighters to be behind your balls, don't be in front of your chest, don't be in front of your balls. Mm -hmm. So telling them that, you know, I'm showing them the correct way to do it. You're a boxer first. Mm -hmm. Let's get our boxing straight. We can add this stuff to it, that slick shit to it, but let's do it the correct way. You know what I'm saying? We can, we can't, we, if we're going to put our hands down, we got to put them down in the right, at the right time. I can't do it in the inside. That's the mm -hmm. wrong way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And in the times we do do it, we're going to master our defense. Let's get out of this master. Let's work on these defense moves a thousand and one time so you master it. Because anything you master become a habit. If you don't, it won't. Mm -hmm. and you make you make those small mistakes. So let's limit those mistakes. Let's, let's master our defense. And let's stay sharp. You know, keep our fundamentals, and the sky is going to be the limits, man. You can do all that stuff you want to do. Mm. But let's do it the correct way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The best way. Repetition. Unless you, yeah. unless you get hit, the longer you last in this game. Yeah. And we're going to get far with that. Yeah, it's, it's re repeating the same thing over and over again. Like Bruce Lee once said, it's better to have one kick that you've practiced a thousand times than to have a thousand different kicks. If, if, you, if you don't practice it, you never master it. Yeah. Master your craft. That's what the great ones do. Whatever you do, the great ones master it. They have fundamentals. If if if, if it's fundamentals at a regular job, if it's fundamentals in football, if it's fundamentals being a school teacher, mm -hmm. master your craft, master your boxing, and the sky's the limits. Mm -hmm. When you're fundamentally sound, you're ready for anything. That's right, man. Is there any other sports that you like to do outside of basketball? Uh, basketball? Again, that's quite interesting because there's a lot of change of direction in yeah. that. And there's like, you know, the, Lomachenko's dad famously took, I don't know Dance. if you know, yeah, took him out of boxing for three years. Dancing. Made Just him do Russian sure. Russian dancing. Just yeah. sure. And then brought him back into boxing. And that's why Loma can, <laughs> hey man, can this change kid can angles. Dance. And no, no disrespect to him, but he, I mean, like, you move like you black, like mm -hmm. he's doing can dance, like that. If you can dance, you can box, you can do a lot of things. And, you know, it's just some, I just, I'm just some, I'm just surprised to see all the things he does. Mm. How he dance, how he stand, rhythm. It's like, in rhythm, the whole song, it's like, you mm. don't see that. Like, yeah. He, he, the sky's the limit for him, man. And, you know, we're going to keep dancing yeah. our way to the top, man. We're going to do it too constructively, yeah. the correct way. Yeah. And we're going to be a young man, a young champion. And it's going to tell him I have to pull him to the side and talk to him. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to learn and teach each other because I'm learning him. You know what? Like, like I had to take, it had to take me a time to learn how to talk to him. What I say to, to make you go ain't going to be the same thing no, I yeah. say to you him. To and everybody to got the same mm -hmm. temperament. So you talk to people different. You teach them different. So I had to learn. You need know, to see what he engages with, yes. which, which words you say and which key Thank words you. will bring different reactions yes. from him. And then you learn it and then because when I was when I was interested in him, that made me want to learn. Like, okay, this kid great, he got a good potential. Let me sit back and watch what makes him go. Mm -hmm. What's the right words? Because if you don't find the right words, you won't be able to hit that right spot, and it yeah. will never work. Totally. I mean, when I was in the UK before, I used to work in a pupil referral center. Okay. So this is a place where they send kids who are just whiling out of school. They're not getting in. There's key fobs on the door because you know there's going to be fights everywhere. And I remember having a, a conversation with the principal and I was like, you need to get some young blood in here because these are 50 year old white women who don't know the world these kids come from. They, the way they're talking to them, they're not getting into, they don't understand where they're coming from. So they don't know how to speak to them. Yeah. They don't know how to, how to engage, engage their minds right. and how to, to, to the point where, you know, when we started going in there, and then the kid would be like, hold on, this guy's using words that, that we say from looking where we're from. Looking at the same you know, He knows the block I live in. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
he he knows the block. Look he knows he knows that if you if the buzzers are not working, you can go to the other door, walk up the bridge, and go across there. Now, when you say that to a kid who's from the street and from the block, he's like, okay, I want to listen to you because I know you know what I'm going yeah. through. I know you know you, you hit that button. You know what I mean. You, you know what I'm going through. This woman that's like, you should really think about your future. This kid's going, man, get out of it, man. I want to finish school so I can jump out the window and go and sell some drugs, man. Right. Like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it means nothing. So, I think it's really important being able to adapt your coaching method and 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 th because again, you've been around everywhere well, and you've lived a full life. You've been up. You've been down. You've been left. You've been right. So. You have so many different things to give him from different parts of your yeah. life that can that can help him achieve these things. Um, you're very lucky, dude. No, no, yeah, no. you're very lucky. Oh. I'm very lucky. Yeah. Because if if he was to go the wrong way, I can explain to him why it's not right. Mm -hmm. I can say, "Cool, you want to do that? What that's going to do?" Because my experience. I can I can open doors and open this antenna to why not to do it. That's mm. why you shouldn't do it. This why not? Because my experience is what happened to me, and the the best teachers experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and um, understanding a young man and knowing how to adapt to him and looking out the understand the same window. My window maybe was wider than yours, but you you had the same type of view. You had the same view, yeah. yeah. And, and so I can relate, and so I can I can have you do this, man. Hop that fence and make a left. Yeah. Don't hop the fence. Hop the other fence. That's a bad fence. Go left. We're gonna make a left this way and go this way. Because I went right. Trust yeah. me, right is not the way the to right. go. Yeah. yeah. There's a dog yeah. around that corner. There's an old lady around that corner. that's yeah. crazy, and and they got they got drugs over there. So we're gonna go this way. So you're you're, you're teaching the guy, young man, and showing him your your. That you're familiar in a lot of other ways, yeah. but this how I did it. This how I walked through mine. Mm. Let's do it this way, champ. Yeah, and it I think it's really, me. yeah, I think it's really important. A, a lot of a lot of adults don't realize the importance of explaining because they're like, he's a kid, he won't understand or whatever. Like even I, my eldest son's twenty now, and the way I talk to him is like, listen, I don't think you should do that because A, B, C, or D. Now you can still do it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for you to make your mistakes, but I'm just telling you I did A, B, and C. Yeah, they right. weren't really cool. <laughs> D is the way to go. You can either take my advice and 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 save yourself some hurt and some pain or whatever mm -hmm. it is, or I'm happy for you to do it. But this whole because I said so thing or whatever, that's just going to drive people away. Of course. Because they, this whole I'm an adult and that's why. Well, what do you mean you're an adult? I still want to live. You if know? you take the time out to know which which button to open and which door, which button to touch and which door to open mm -hmm. with someone, you may you may open the middle door first with someone, but this guy you may open the left door first. So you gotta learn. You gotta take the time. If you take the time out to look at someone and try to figure out and try to open the right door, you may you may get a better situation out. Of, out of understanding where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. So you take the time out, and if that door don't work, then you try another door, and maybe the other door works. So you just, you gotta engage and really care and put forward an effort to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you get farther than just forcing it. You can't force nothing. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can't force, I can take you to the water fine, but I can't, can't make, make you drink. swallow. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Where'd you get the name Lightning from? My dad. Yeah? Yeah. Did you? Uh, when was the first time you were given the name? I don't actually know. It was just a random day. <laughs> Did you? You don't remember it? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I am lightning. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. I was just thinking of nicknames one day, and you just came up with it. Yeah. Mm. Um. Again, another thing. I've seen pictures and videos of you, where you have your name on all your clothing. Yeah. Where your name's on the gym. Yeah. On the bags. Yeah. You realize that's not normal, right? Yeah, I, I know that. Like again, again. Um, when, whenever I whenever I'm talking to you, it's coming from a place of love. It's not a case of mm. me going to you. No, no. You don't realize how lucky you no, are. It's, it's trying to uh, like sound ungrateful it, or something. No, no, no. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's me said. just trying to like, help me understand. Like, yeah, to help you understand you. in a way that maybe you know sometimes because in life what you realize is abundance of something makes you not appreciate it as much, yeah. mm -hmm. and not necessarily because. That's just the way you are. You don't care. Sometimes too much of something 
can you can you, you can harm you and, and you can and you can not see it because it's there if it overwhelms you yeah because it's there it's there isn't it uh, mm -hmm. i know but i guarantee you there are other kids that wish when they that. walk into that gym mm. and they see you in there with your name on your clothes with your name on the bags mm. they're going oh. i want that i so want that, i want that yeah that's why you got to be great grateful and, and and appreciative and never forget where you came from yes mm. because it all can be taken away and I drop for now. Like that. Yeah. So, you know, and have, you know, everyone don't believe the same, but you got to have a relationship with a higher power. Mm hmm 100%. Yeah, you got to talk, you, you got to have a special person to talk to because, you know, God had me a lot through the, through the Olympics. I was petrified mm -hmm. when I was in the Olympics. I didn't believe I really did it. And that was my best friend. Hey, I need your help, God. I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta have a high power because you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a, a secret person in your life. Yeah. If it's, it's, it's that your even dad, when these yeah. two, when these two are getting on your nerves, yeah. you're just like, all right, I've had enough hey, of them. God. I'm going to go, okay, God. <laughs> oh, hey, God, need help, man. Yeah. You might say, just go for a walk, champ. Yeah. Walk it off. You don't say nothing, just go for a walk. Yeah. Listen and appreciate that you are blessed and you are in a better position. It could be worse. Look at some of the kids out here. They don't have what you got. Yeah. A father, they don't have a house. They don't have a father. They don't have a father figure in their life. They don't have everything in front of them that they need for their boxing career. A lot of people don't have no way to the gym. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good fighters that live too far from the gym and can't get a ride to the gym. And that's why they ain't not in the gym. You don't have that. So mm -hmm. be blessed. Be happy. Be appreciative. And, you know. And you've got a long way, man. Yes. All right, who is your, I'm going to ask you both the same question. Best fight you've ever seen, start with. Hmm. I don't know. You and no pub fights. <laughs> it's got to yeah. be in boxing. The best, no, no, what comes to your mind now? I'm not going to let him go first because he's going to spark some fights in Grimson your mind. Grimson Kevin Kelly. Why? Because there's so many knockdowns in that, that fight. So, that, obviously, I know Prince would have won that. Yeah. But. It's just a good fight because it's like one knockdown. Oh, I'm going to get you back. Knockdown again. It's just like. It's just, Too much. They're yeah. going back at each other like, in like five. Every five seconds, there's like a knockdown. It's yeah, like, that was an amazing fight. It Do was. you have any preference in gloves when you're wearing in colours? I know Naz used to. Mm. He used to love Kalita Rays, as you can see on the table. Yeah. Um, no, I don't really have any. Like, no? Winnings, Grants, and. Uh, what about colour? Depends, but I'll just go, I'll just go where the cut colours are. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to be matching. Best fight ever. The best fight ever that I was saying, a fight actually I was a part of, it was the Floyd Mayweather and Canelo, Canelo, no, Koto fight. Interesting. I thought you were going to say Shane Mosley. Yeah. No, no, it was Koto. Koto. Man, Floyd... Trained, he really trained too hard for the fight. He really overtrained for the fight. And we both said after the fight to each other, I said to him, You know, you train too much. We both said at the same time, overtrained. He was just so worried about Canelo, I me, mean, Koto, mm -hmm. that he actually did too much. And if he wanted to did too much, I think he would have knocked him out. But I was very, that was one of, one of the fights I was very, um, Attached to it was mm. really big. It was really big, and that's one of the best fights I ever remember. Was the mm. Koto and Mayweather? Because Koto was no pushover, dude. Oh no, he was Koto. I was worried bang, because dude. he was worried, yeah, a little bit. But he actually he did a little bit too much that mm. that training camp, and uh, he just and she kept calling me in the middle of the night. Meet me here, and we're gonna do some more work. Mm. I'm like, we just trained for six <laughs> yeah. hours, man. What's wrong? No, I need to eat doing? too. I don't want to chill yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm laying back chilling. I had to get up, meet him at the uh, other club, and meet him at the steam room, and meet him here, meet him there. And he did too much that night, but I was very pleased with it. Yeah. And um, he looked it well. Have you seen, to me, what I think is the best free rounds in Buckton? Hagler versus hands no no that's your homework for after this show okay. to watch these three rounds which i mm -mm. think are the best three rounds in boxing ever in your round 10 gym there's a poster it's beige on the wall 
three after the toilet, and it's of that fight. Oh, that fight lasted three rounds. Tommy Hearns and Marvin Hagler. Hearns, yeah. Oh my God, Hagler won by knockout. It was, was a it very good where, fight. Was the Tommy Hearns the big guy? Tall one? Yes, yeah, tall, yeah. yeah. Was that the one where he mashed his legs or something before it? No, no, no. The no. ball the, header. When you see this fight, because Hagler, again, he was he was a beast. It's one of my favorites. Hearns, too. Yeah, me too. Hearns. Um, something I need to talk to you about. I don't know how you feel about this, but now that I've got somebody from the Mayweather camp, and we're not going to get into it too much. You rate Pacquiao? Because he's one of my favorite boxers of all Pacquiao time. Pacquiao is good. Yes. No one drags me. Do you rate him? Do I rate him? Rate him as a boxer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think he, he wasn't given the fight at the right time? Well, no comment moment. <laughs> well, with me, I, I I wish the fight would happen sooner, but they Floyd, Floyd told me one day, he was like, look, Nate, if he's not taking the test, I'm not fighting him. Hmm. He said, if I lose to that man, I want to lo- know that I lost to the better man. If you if, if you beat me with a suffering system, I, I, I won't know. If you're, not, if you're not willing to take the test, we're not fighting. And I do respect it. If I lose, I know I lost to a better man. He was better than me. But if I lose someone that cheated, he said, look at the Cotto fight. Hmm. He said, Cotto would have probably gave me a better fight if Cotto would have made him take a drug test first. He said, caught him for him the drug test. Then he fights me. He said, caught would have been a tougher fight. And that shortened the corner career by taking you fight someone with, 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 with horse power in their, in their body. He said, it can really damage you. He said, if you're not taking the test, I'm not fighting him. And I did respect him for that because if, if you ain't going to take the well, why not take the test? But mm-hmm. I do take, make, think Pacquiao is one of the greatest fighters ever. He in my top 10. He's in the top 10. He's number 10. Mm. He's a bad man, but... Wow, number 10, that low? Yeah, he's number 10. That's a very low score for Pacquiao, man. I've got five. Well, you know, everybody has their own... I mean, I guess if you're going of all time. Of all time, everybody got their own number. Yeah, yeah. In their own list. Who's your number one? Mayweather. Mayweather? Mayweather. um, Do you feel like... Except for Mayweather. Yeah. Do you feel like Mayweather changed, though? Because... Mayweather changed his whole style. Mayweather used to bang. He used to knock people out. Yeah. And then just like that, the whole style changed. Yeah. Philly because Shell, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for the knockout. Right. I'm gonna And he told me, Nate, look, I I'm I'm wanna be the best. I'm not finna get them what they want. He said, Look at Muhammad Ali. He said he's one of the greatest, but he, he, didn't, lost yeah. he didn't last. He said because he said, Look at him now. He said, I love him, I appreciate him, but I'm gonna be smarter. I'm not going to let them walk me into the fights they want to walk me into and be a champion the way they want me to be. I'm going to be smart and fight and keep my faculty saying, I respect them for that. Hmm. Respect them for that. Oh, Pacquiao at number 10 is very low for me. Yeah, man. No, no, but being on yeah. the list, man, you know. Yeah, yeah, being on the list, that's yeah. a big thing because, you know, it's 10 out I, of how many million? I got Sugar <laughs> you know. Ray Robinson second. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, it's my list. Everybody got their own list, yeah, you yeah. know. You know, um, you know I, I can't be mad at what you say. Yeah. And I can't be mad at what he's saying, but everybody got their list, and I respect that. Yeah. How do you feel? So, obviously, taking the route that you're taking, you're essentially signing away half of your childhood. Mm. And let me elaborate on that. I know what you mean. You're mm-hmm. going to have to put a lot of time in when other people are doing other things or having fun. Missing out, yeah. Missing out. I mean... It could be missing out or not. Well, like I said, when I was growing up, I was training to be a yeah, professional footballer. I didn't see it as missing out at all because I loved yeah. doing that. The sacrifice you know I mean? comes with big, big rewards though when you get far. What are the rewards for you? Like now living a lifestyle and the boy. Okay. No, like, I would never have imagined that when I first died. That's 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 the biggest reward of all. What's more important to you, money? No. Or or the boxing itself. The boxing itself, same. Granddad's a Hall of Famer, I guess. Obviously, don't get me wrong, I want to be fucking rich, but yeah. Yeah. Because I did see you saying you were going to be the biggest paid fighter. Yeah, I would. And I like it, to be honest. Yeah. You got to dream. History. Hi, uh, you got to think it's, big and dream it's, big. It's not even the dreaming, it's manifesting as well. Manifestation yeah. is strong. You know, thoughts become things. You couldn't tell Michael Jordan, he won the best player in, in the world, even when he was in high school and college. Yeah. He knew what he believed in, so 
you got you, you got to you got to see it when no one else sees mm-hmm. it. Like I tell, in to to build a to build to build a chair, you have to close your eyes and know where you're gonna put the legs at first. Where you gonna put the seat at? You got to you got to measure. You got to see it in your own mind when no one else sees it. So I respect that. You know, you got to know you're the best when no mm-hmm. one else believe you. When no yeah. one else think you're crazy. You got a crazy. Great people are crazy. Yeah. You don't think Tiger Woods crazy? Yeah, everybody's sure. crazy. Yeah. It's great. Got their own, their own, their own way of um, hitting that button and doing what they do to, to climb that mountain that they climb every day, and whatever sport they do, whatever they do to be great. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. You got to respect them. Yeah, and sometimes when somebody tells you otherwise, that is a fuel for the fire. Oh yeah. You know, there's a story of uh, Kobe playing against Jordan, and he told he was wearing Jordans, and he told him, "Yeah, you can put the shoes on." But you're never gonna be a Jordan, you know, play like Jordan. Mm-hmm. And they're saying Kobe didn't speak to the team for a week, came back, played against Jordan, and sunk fifty something points against him. Like that kind of fire. Sometimes having people say, "Nah, you're not gonna make it. It's a pipe dream." Of course. It's like, okay, let me show you what a pipe dream is. You know, you gotta have a will to win. Yeah. You gotta have sacrifice, sacrifice, discipline, the will to win. To be great in whatever you do. That's yeah. the three things that are important. Sacrifice, will to win. You gotta have that. Yeah, I'm saying that. And, when, and with those, with those things in your repertoire, it's gonna get you far. Mm. Sacrifice, a will to win, and um, I forgot the other one. <laughs> mm. I forgot it as well. <laughs> but you so gotta what, have it. What, what do you see in your future? What do you what? what let's Let's talk about it realistically in your head. Wh- wh- where you see the stages going? I actually don't know. I mean, I'm a visionary person. Obviously, the only thing I can really tell so far is that we'll be a world champion in multiple weights, hopefully. What's, what's the first weight that you, you think you're going to be Obviously, the lightest. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called straw weight or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let God uh, plan that out for me. Do you, have you visualized that yeah. already? Yeah, like the belts, holding the belts. Of course I have. Every boxer does. Well, yeah. I don't know about every boxer, but I do. And that's something that you see there that's just in your head. Yeah. And what steps... Well, I was going to say what steps are you taking to get there, but it's pretty clear of the steps that you're taking to get there. But where does it go from here? So you're you're living full-time in Dubai, right? Yeah. How do you see that working for him? Because obviously, unless the great fighter comes out here, where are the fights? Well, we're gonna we're gonna go abroad. We're gonna go to America, Chicago, get some of that work. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go everywhere we can. To, go back to England a couple of times. We come go to England. We're gonna travel abroad and, and just put this kid on a, a roadmap to success and, and teach him as we go. And you know, we, if we have some bumps in the road which we don't expect to, we're gonna learn from it and grow from it. You know what I'm saying? Like I just said. The three things, sacrifice, discipline, and the will to win, he got to have it. And he, I think he has those three things. Can you see all of those inside of him? Yes, that. he has. Of course, sacrifice, will to win. He has the determination. Mm. And he has all that. So you got to believe in yourself and know it. You know what I'm saying? And the sky's the limit for this kid. And then we're going we're gonna to keep keep pushing the buttons and you know go over every hurdle we have to. There's going to be some hurdles across the road here and there, but... We we'll make it we'll make it to the top. Mm-hmm. Gonna, you know, just you know, just keep believing and keep knowing and keep, keep fighting in the sky's limit. And at this stage now, what do you see? Not as lacking, but what do you see that you're going to be working on most with his with his style with his boxing? I already know what he's gonna say. Probably the feet. No, the feet can good just mentoring. Yeah. Put him to the side, talking to him. Oh, yeah, probably yeah. Yeah, mentoring. Well, that thing gets me quite a lot. Yeah, because yeah. that's, I mean, self-control is one of the most difficult, but the most powerful tools you can ever have. To be able to to kind of step outside yourself and look at yourself and go, hold on a minute, I'm taking this a bit too far. You know, especially at a young age where you're ready to blow, you're ready to mm-hmm. wild out and just be like, ah, you know, if, and a lot of people separately to the boxing, what you're getting in the mentoring is 
you know, a spiritual mentoring, helping you understand yourself, your body, your mind and everything. And Forget dudes. about the boxing. A lot of people don't and dudes and get that. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of people get to the age of 25, 26, they still have got no idea who they are, what they want, where they're going, you know? So I think you really, 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 and you've been told this by everyone. And again, it's coming out of a place of love. If people didn't care, they wouldn't say it. Be very aware of the gift that you have. Yeah. And be very aware, not only in your own physical attributes and the gifts, the gifts that have been given your dad, your family, you know, Nate. Be also aware of how quick these things could disappear. Yeah, I know. Because I that's, it's so yeah, that's, and I know it's hard to understand because nobody really realizes loss or anything until they've been through it. It's hard to try and explain that to someone. You can't. You, you can't, can't, yeah. You can't. So I can Im I can understand you going, yeah, all right, I know what you mean. But at the same time going, no, I don't, I, know, what I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? At all. So that's understandable. But as you grow, you'll start to, to really focus. And, you know, it's been a pleasure just being around and hearing you guys talk about each other. Thanks. You can really see the connection and the love that you, you two have. I just um, wanted to uh, thank you for letting us have the opportunity no, to come on as well. Dude, anytime, man. We're going to do this after every fight. Every time, every fight you win, <laughs> we're going to start talking about I'll be like about that uppercut that you did. <laughs> no, no, it'll be, again, like at the end of this, I'm going to get you guys to sign some gloves that are going to go up in the studio. Yeah. And in four years, when you're the champion, I'm going to be like, the price is going to go he's, up. He's saying that the price tomorrow is not the same price yeah. as today. <laughs> like, but it's going to be like, he signed that when he saw himself being champion. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Which is going to mean even more. Yes. You know, I don't sell any memorabilia, any of my stuff. I've got stuff from way back from Tyson, from Hamad Ali and stuff. It's yeah. just like, that will mean a lot. And you'll remember it as well. well. And you're not getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, Nate, it's been a pleasure to, to hear about, you know, how you feel about this young boy. And you're in a select group of, of of a few that all feel the same way about him and you know i only wish wish you the best and, and the sky's the limit is there anything that you want to say to the to the fans before we go just uh be ready to watch me show my dazzle my uh my skills and my fashion is tomorrow night 9 p.m on emd live stream nice nate any message that you want to leave to any aspiring boxers or or anyone that's watching? Just believe in yourself, work hard, and fight for the greatness, not the money. You gotta fight to be great, the money will come. Work hard, believe in yourself, and keep, and keep, and no matter what no one else say, work hard on your dreams, man, and sacrifice. Mm. And yeah, man. Too far. That's that's so true, and appreciate it more coming from, from you, because, you know, Thank you. You, you lived such a full life and been everywhere from ups and downs and everything I, and even myself can only learn from from your wise words um you know i'm pissed about two things one tracksuit i ain't got my tracksuit yet it's on its way, <laughs> it's on its way. Yeah. the next way and i'm gonna be there and i'm gonna be second, like what's your tracksuit yours got diamonds yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly right and the second thing is this video is going to get more views in five years when he wins this championship oh yeah so i'm gonna have to wait to get the views on this video it's going to get like a certain amount of views now and then once you make it, they're going to type your name into Google and it's going to bring it back to this video yes. where it all began, where we spoke about everything. You oh, know? I might have all whites in my head. <laughs> yeah, time. right? And I hope, you know, we represented you too well um, in the conversation. And again, shout out to your dad um, for many reasons. That I don't, and to your mom and, and everyone around. Yeah, and everyone around. For sure, who's helping you and, and keeping you grounded and everything. And, and then, then, then. And that's it. Shout out to the dad, the mom, and the whole family. Good people. They got a good kid here. Let's do it. Thank you. Let's do it. God I bless. can't wait. I'm actually excited. Um, wait, where's the fight tomorrow? Uh, where's the call? I need some tickets, man. I can't believe I'm not even tickets. Bro, you, man. I need tickets. I'm fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to be part of this ring walk. <laughs> we got you. Let's do it. Guys, thanks again so much. Thank you. Guys, I've been AJ. They've been Nate. And the lightning junior. junior. Where's Jose? Junior? Huh? Where's Junior? I'm gonna go back to that. The lightning junior, where's the original light? Is your dad the original lightning? The flash? No, no. No? Oh, it's 
weird, isn't it? <laughs> You're just like, who knows? Guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Ta -ra. Boom.